Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Really exciting day today. We are getting started on our Precision Guitar Kits custom guitar kit that I ordered. I did an unboxing video of this recently. Uh, great response from you guys. Clearly you're much more interested in this one than you are in the acoustic build I was doing, which is fine. So today we're gonna get started on this. Um, I'm gonna have to glue in the neck, of course, and I wanna do that before I do the real finishing work, but the very first thing I wanna do is get the die done on the top so that I don't have to die the top with the neck in place. The actual spraying work I can do with the neck in there, no problem, and I may or may not do that. I probably will because I don't really wanna have to clamp on the back of here when there's a coat of something, but I wanna get the die work done first, get that out of the way, and then I can work on actually coating the thing afterward. So in case you didn't see the unboxing video, this is what we're dealing with. I don't have the neck here at the shop, it's at my home shop, um, but this thing has a beautiful flame maple top and a black limba back, black limba neck, Wenge fretboard, custom selected <laughs> frets, all the stuff that I wanted, all right? Uh, if you're interested in one of these, check out the link in the description below to Precision Guitar Kits. They do fantastic work. You get to select everything. It's more expensive, so you guys have seen me talk about tons of like solo guitars kits before. They're good value for the dollar, but you get what you get for them, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you wanna pay more and be able to select everything and get like a full maple cap and stuff like that, then these are your guys. Completely different kind of thing, completely different market, still guitar kits. This one's already sanded and everything, so there's not much, there's a lot less to do on this, on this uh, type of kit in terms of work, but you end up with a beautiful product at the end and it's easier to get there. I did a little dye sample uh, on a piece of maple, not flame maple, but a piece of maple, and I posted it on my Instagram in a reel there, and I basically asked you guys to vote. I shouldn't say you guys. I asked the people who follow me on Instagram to vote on whether, they, whether I should do like a green and blue, something very unique and interesting. Maybe not completely unique. There are other green and blue guitars, but a green and blue dye job on this, or if I should do a more muted kind of standard sunbursty type of look, uh, also using dyes and, and amber lacquer. And the votes were actually more unanimous than usual. You guys wanted something interesting. You want green, you said don't play it safe. And so most of you went that way and that's what we're gonna do. If you wanna be able to put in your two cents on stuff like that in the future and you don't follow me on Instagram, you're welcome to do so. Link is in the description. Uh, I just post my progress on these projects there. So what we're gonna be using in this one is the green ultra penetrating NGR dye stain from Mohawk. Big fan of this stuff. I've used their black on plenty of projects. I've used their yellow, I've used their red. Um, I've got a couple other ones now, but here I have green and blue, and they're very vibrant colors, and we're gonna end up with a really interesting look here. So we're gonna do that. Because this is a cap, we can sand it back after, get an accented look. I might use both of these colors. I'm gonna start with green, see how that goes, and then maybe do a little blue work around the outside. And then actually we're gonna go over it with an amber lacquer. It's gonna be a very interesting finish. I think you guys are, li are gonna like it. I know I'm gonna like it. I'm planning on keeping this guitar for myself. So whether you like it is secondary to whether I like it. Simple as that. Let's get started, bring you in closer here. We're gonna get this sanded and prepped, do a little bit of tape work around the outside because we're only dying the top, and then we'll get started on the dye work. Let's get after it. So as we've talked about, this guy is already sanded very nicely. So I don't have much to do here. I just wanna make sure it's scuffed up, it's abraded well before I go and try and dye it. So it's only going to take me a minute. I don't have any shaping work to do on this one. There's a lot less of the basic woodwork that I would do on a typical kit. Um, don't really have to go there. This guy's pretty much ready to go. So we're going to get this done, then clean it off with a little wax and grease remover. And then we're going to start dyeing it. And I'm gonna try and do this sanding without getting myself out of breath because uh, I need some exercise. All right, so that's ready. I'm gonna wipe that off real quick and then we'll come back in a second. You probably won't even notice and we'll get started on the taping. Okay, so I'd like to use some fine line tape because I might end up doing a natural binding and some thicker tape because I'm gonna be protecting the sides. So let's start with 
the fine line tape right around the outside. This is the same thing that I do for a normal binding. Oh, my hand's still dirty here. Same thing I do for a normal binding. I use this orange tape. I'm just going to aim to dye the top here. I mean, normally if you want to do a natural binding, what you would do is you would basically seal a binding around the edge. So you'd go in and tape the opposite of this, and then you'd apply like a lacquer or something to seal the edge so that the dye can't get into it. And then you'd go ahead with your staining. So I'm not doing that in this case. Uh, I'm just gonna tape it and then probably do a little scraping work after. But the binding may end up being ambered with the rest of the body. This is kind of an indecisive move. Basically, I haven't chosen exactly what I wanna do yet. So I'm gonna have to peel this off to do my side taping anyway afterwards. So this is just for the dyeing process. Now, let me know what you guys think of this. Um, although, of course, the decision is ultimately up to me because it's my guitar. I think I'm going to do an amber lacquer over the whole body, including the black limba back and neck. And then I've got my own tricks for taking all the gloss off the neck after and making it smooth and fast because I don't like gloss necks. But I'll probably do a gloss top and probably a gloss back as well. I'm not entirely sure. I might matte out the back as well or satin it out, I guess. But uh, the top's probably gonna be a hard gloss. Let me know what you think of that. That'll be lacquer. That'll probably also be done using Mohawk products. All right, that's a lot of talking and taping. Let's, uh, let's fast forward through the rest of this tape job. There's not much left. Get the sides done and then move on to some dyeing work. Actually, I guess I don't have to tape anything further here. That's gonna create the line. I'm just gonna be reasonable about how I do this. So. Let's move right along. So this NGR dye stain, if you haven't seen me use it, you've clearly haven't been following me that long, which is fine. Uh, welcome aboard. It soaks in quickly. It doesn't go insanely deep because it's a fast drying finish. So a water-based stain will soak in further and th thus be harder to sand out. So that might be good or might be bad. It all depends on what you're looking for. But this stuff doesn't soak in quite as far because it's solvent based and it dries almost instantly. It doesn't take much, it's a very powerful, it's potent, this stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna fold up one of my shop towels here. I've been shaking this. I highly recommend, see I'm gonna recommend this but not do it, I highly recommend gloves uh, for this because if you stain your hands, they stain for a while. And like I said, this stuff is strong. Let's bring it a little closer for this part and get moving on it. We've come to the moment of truth here. Let's see how this beautiful flame maple top looks when you wipe some of this dye on it. There you go. Look how quickly that accents, how awesome that flame is. So Precision Guitar Kits chose obviously some incredible wood for this. It looks great. There's really no two ways about it. You may not all like the color and well, I know you won't all like the color, but uh, Hey, the vote said go with green, so here we are. I really like it, and I just love how that looks right off the bat. Now, you get the, it's called chatoyance in this type of wood, which is kind of that interesting 3D effect you get. I don't know why my camera is focusing like that. Sorry, that's because probably because my hands get in there, and it thinks it needs to focus on my hand, and then it decides to focus on the guitar and go back. But anyway, you get the, the chatoyance when you... Um, put a tint in clear coat and sometimes when you dye like this you get it as well when you start doing a bunch of sand back dyeing you kind of lose that and instead you get just more of a firm green accent pattern but here we've got a little bit of both it looks good it's not super even on this first pass because I realized pretty quickly that you can kind of see pigtailing uh, or at least that's what I call it I think a lot of people do basically sanding marks. You can see some marks in the wood and the dye is soaking into those and giving it a bit of a rougher look. And so I determined at this point that I basically need to go in and sand it back and make sure I get all of those out of there. So the top comes very smooth, smooth enough that you could go ahead and seal it right away and paint it, do a transparent paint job or something like that. But it's not maybe smooth enough for this type of dye job. So I'm going in with 320 first and then I'll do 400 grit as well. I'm going to smooth this right out and get it ready for 
this die. And again, it, depending on the finish you're doing, you don't necessarily want to do this. So if I were going in with a sealer right now, I would go no smoother than 220. Really want to give that sealer something to bite into. In particular with like a polyester sealer or a vinyl sealer, there's no need to go smoother than that. But for this, because of the effect I'm going for and because I really want to make sure I'm getting out all of those little sanding marks, the pigtails, I'm going to go in smoother. So I start with 320 by hand. It's taking a little longer than I'd like. So I end up going in with my 5 inch Dynabraid sander here, but using a 6 inch piece of 400 grit paper. The reason I'm doing that is because I make sure I get the sanding pad right in the middle of the paper. And then you can see the paper kind of curves up around the edges instead of having a hard edge like it would normally when you've got a piece of sandpaper that's the same size as the pad. And that curve actually I use. Um, I use it to follow the curve of the guitar here. So that's a little trick that I like to use for some of these more contoured bodies. Uh, I've got a 6 inch sanding pad that I can throw on here as well. And I've got 5 inch sandpaper that I can put on the 5 inch pad. But with this, I kind of get the opportunity to bend it around a little bit, and I find it makes it easier to do those inside curves, especially the more gentle ones like you have on this type of guitar. You do have to be very careful, though. Um, for example, I wouldn't necessarily use that if I were sanding clear coat, because that's a good way to immediately burn through the clear coat in the areas where the paper bends. You can't really tell exactly how much pressure you're going to get in those areas, so one, you need to be careful, and two... Uh, practice makes perfect. Uh, so you need to spend a little bit of time at it, especially if you were planning on sanding clear coat that way. Anyway, getting back to the task at hand, so to speak, I am basically going to go in and sand the entire guitar at this point, and I'm going to do it all pretty much with the 400 grit. So I'm going to take all of those scratches out of the top. I'm actually using my die as a guide coat, I call it, uh, and I think that's what it's called in the automotive industry. So a guide coat is a coat that you put on and then you use it, sand it back and use that to basically determine whether you have any low spots. So if you've got low spots, the die stays there or the guide coat stays there. It doesn't work quite the same with die because it soaks in, but the principle is very similar and I can kind of tell where I still need more sanding work because that's where the die has stuck around. Now in some areas I've obviously got open grain and the die is going to stay in there. That's fine too. I am using air to clean this off to kind of clean out the pores and stuff like that. You can also use a tack rag, but I get a little worried about tack rags on wood. I find that sometimes they leave a touch of residue and then paint or dye misbehaves after. So I'm not a huge fan of using tack rags, but I'm not going to say they're a bad idea. They're just not what I usually go with. So I'm going to quickly go in and sand the back of the guitar. I'm getting my contours again using this bigger pad on the, or sorry, this bigger piece of sandpaper on the five inch pad. And, uh, and that's about it. Just getting it all ready. And then I can go in and do my dye work on the top again. And eventually we're going to do a tinted toner on the, the whole thing, which will be an amber. So starting again, and this time I don't have to worry about the pigtailing, so to speak. Um, and I'm going to be doing this in two colors. So these are decisions that I hadn't necessarily made when I did the opening to this video, but now, well, now I know how it turns out. So we're going to start with the green, and we're just making sure we get some in all the pores here. This stuff dries real quick, so it can be a little challenging to get it on there even, but you can always sand it back a little bit or re-wipe it or take some methanol to it or add some more dye. There's lots of options. It's not that difficult to get on evenly if you're paying attention, um, but it's also not that important if you're adding another color, which you will see me do here shortly. I'm going to go in with the blue, and I'm going to kind of start by trying to almost fade it a little bit, and then I'm going to change my mind. Anyway, I spent a lot of time dyeing this guitar, not because it took a lot of time, but because I just had so much fun with it, and I kept messing with it. But I really, really like how that dye looks, and I really like how it works with this awesome flame maple. So pretty happy with everything there. I'm going to sand it back a little bit to do a grain accenting technique. I've shown how to do this before, but the gist of it is pretty simple. You sand back partially, and then the die stays in the open grain and kind of comes out of the tighter closed grain because it's it hasn't soaked in as far. Pretty simple. 
So that was the plan initially when I started sanding back here. And I don't want to go too aggressive here because I don't want to take a whole bunch out of the uh, open grain. So I'm actually using a high grit piece of Abernet here, uh, Merca Abernet, which is nice, nice paper. And this is what I'm left with afterward. So I've accented that deeper grain in green. Things are looking a lot smoother, a lot uh, more even. I don't have any of those pigtail sanding marks here, so all of those um, areas that you see that are dyed, that's the natural kind of look of the wood. And now I'm going to go in and try to do a bit of a burst. I thought a burst would be a good idea on this one at first. I did end up changing my mind, so I'll spoil that surprise for you. But I thought a burst would be cool in, in the blue. And then as soon as I started doing it, I realized I just liked the color so much um, that I went for it. And at this point, I had already decided I was going to put a little amber over top of it too, just to give it kind of a weird extra dimension, so to speak. So I'm going in with the blue everywhere. That's what I end up choosing here. And uh, I kind of also toyed around with the idea of doing it a little darker around the outside and didn't think I needed to because, well, look at that. That looks awesome. Or at least I think it looks awesome. You may disagree. Feel free to let me know in the comments below what you think of this color mix, what you think of my color choice, and what you think of this kit so far. I'm sure I'll get a couple of those puking emojis based on the color choice, but uh, oh well, this one's for me. So that's what it looks like, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you are excited for the rest of this build. I know I am. Thanks, as always, for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.